So I'm uh, Sean Litster, I'm an Associate Professor in Mechanical Engineering at uh, Carnegie Mellon University. Um, I have a group that focuses on energy technologies. Uh, what we're particularly interested in is energy technologies that use electrochemical devices. So an example of an electrochemical device is a battery that we're very familiar with, or a fuel cell that we might be less familiar with. And so a fuel cell is an alternative to an internal combustion engine. Uh, many of us are familiar with internal combustion engines, they take a fuel they combust, it generate heat, and then that heat is transformed into work that we'd use to propel our car. The difference with a fuel cell, we don't generate that heat. We take the chemical energy in that fuel and we directly convert that to electricity. And that electricity can be used to run an electric motor inside of an electric vehicle. So a lot of the vehicles that we're interested in for fuel cells are heavier vehicles, longer range vehicles. Um, we can also refuel a fuel cell vehicle with hydrogen uh, much more quickly than we can recharge a battery so we can give a consumer an experience uh, similar to what they have with the current uh, vehicle technologies with gasoline. The benefit to a fuel cell over an internal combustion engine is that we can generate the electricity uh, more efficiently than we can combust the fuels. Um, and also the emissions from, at least the tailpipe emissions from a fuel, fuel cell vehicle are CO2 free. The only emission is water vapor uh, from the fuel cell vehicle tailpipe. We have a very unique facility for X-ray imaging at ultra high resolution. So we can do X-ray imaging in three dimensions of these materials at 50 nanometer resolution. So to put that in uh, relation to uh, other length scales, that's about one one thousandth the diameter of a human hair. So you really see the fine structure details of the electrode. We use computational models that take that, that structure from the imaging and understand what are the resistances to electron conductivity, proton conductivity, gas diffusion transport resistances. And if we can find ways to minimize those, we can enhance the performance of the platinum that we use, and then we can use less platinum and reduce the cost of those vehicles. So another area that we have developed uh, significant expertise in is developing sensors which we can put actually into an operating fuel cells electrode or even battery electrodes. We do some work on batteries as well. And what we can do is we can map spatially and within time the distribution of those reactants within the electrode. And we can do that to very fine resolution. There are definitely near-term impacts of this research. So there are a number of fuel cell vehicles that have been tested over a million miles on, like General Motors has a, a fuel cell vehicle they put over a million miles on. A number of automotive companies are beginning small-scale commercialization manufacturing in 2015. But there's still a long way to go until we can see, you know, a, a significant impact on the, on the vehicle, number of vehicles we see on the road that might be a fuel cell vehicle. But from the big picture, we're really excited about ways to minimize the impact of transportation on society and the environment. The benefit of being at Carnegie Mellon for my research is the broad number of collaborators that we have. I have a number of collaborators um, in material science and in other departments where we collaborate on uh, different materials that we use in electrical assembly systems so they can look at the development of the materials, we can look at the transport properties, and we can kind of look at the, the device in a holistic manner. Thank you.